the mother is his girlfriend now too that's right 100 girlfriends hahari hanazuno if you've seen the most recent episode we are now dating the mother let's see what chibi has to say scene is so good it's so good yo she folded so fucking quick she went from i'm gonna make i could make your body disappear i'm straight up the cartel leader too rentaro chan please go out with me she literally breaks down like okay okay i gotta i gotta play this scene with yep. the audio like you okay. guys gotta hear this it's I'm just hearing. It's so perfect like just listen to this audio. like she just the way she says it the voice acting is insane because if you've seen this episode if you've seen what kind of person she was before like leading up to this what the fuck happened but then people can argue it's all these repressed emotions that she's never been able to express because again there's been a gap of void in her heart right what does my youtube title say what does my video say i think it says something about 16 year old boy fills the holes of a 29 year old mom's heart right she's never expressed these feelings before so it makes sense why she's folded so easily <laughs> Oh my goodness, I absolutely love this episode of 100 Girlfriends. It's it's great. Like, okay, let, let's just get right to this. I mm -hmm. like how this entire episode and last episode had, like, this serious plot line going on. Like, if we take a hard look at what this episode was trying to... Even the backstory was so dark with the mom, you know, the 13-year-old at the age of 13, you know, her loved one was, like, terminally ill. Ew. It was giving every individual female character a time to shine, showcase, you know, what they're good at, where they're... Yeah, what they're good at. Nano's good at kicking cats and gouging the eyes of dogs, apparently. ...set is what they can do in a given situation. It was like a family bonding exercise. Yeah. And it was very sweet. It was just showing literally every character what they're good at, how they can help and all that, and how all of them... What was Karane good at? She was good at being flat, so she could, you know, be... Like this to Rentaro. And then she was used for fan service there. That's pretty much it. But actually, it's more than that. Because the more I thought about it, the whole reason why Karane and Rentaro had to do that was to get, you know, get bypass the, the laser beams, right? And in order to do, get past the laser beams, we need to have infrared vision too, right? But the whole point of the infrared vision was to make his eyes kind of like blurred so that when he met the mother, they didn't immediately fall in love. Right? That's an important mechanic in how this, like, first love mechanic kind of comes into play. And then, I thought a little bit further on, who? Who else? Right? Look at this. 100 girlfriends? Wait, wait. Vice principal. If you look at the vice principal's design, right? Look, look at this thumbnail. He's wor she's wearing glasses. So, if you really think about it, if the vice principal takes her glasses off and we make eye contact, I'm just saying... I am- am I cooking here? Am I cooking? I don't know. Come together to help each other in their weak areas as well. And after all these trials and tribulations to kind of finally get to where, you know, Hikari is, you know, and this- oh my god, this is scene. Oh, this yeah, scene was sad. Can, this scene was so sad. Moments. Even her forehead being pressed against the walls here, bro. <laughs> Anyways, you know, kind of taking this out of context, you know, this looks bad. But, um, with- Oh yeah, it actually did. <laughs> so sus with the angles of these characters look at it look at her right now what do you think she's doing like like like, like if you just showed a random person out of context this panel and they'd be like what the fuck are you sure i'm not to see this within context though it's just like yeah she's crying for her friend and the serious situation that she's in but it does look like a fucking anti scene look at they, it they were trying to save hikari from her mother and basically just have her have a life. And, you know, Rintaro's objective with everyone was to basically run away and leave the school setting and all that and just try to live a life with his current family, which yep. really opened up the door for a lot of possibilities in many different directions that the story could go. It makes you wonder, okay, what's next and all that, if that actually theoretically happened. Obviously, judging by how this episode is, that's clearly not going to happen. But I like how all these trials, everything that's going on, you know, it was just like, what's going to happen next? And then... Rintaro finally gets to have, you know, sight on her. He sees her and all that. They have the little sound effect, and then they're... 
Do you think that she has a mole on her upper left ass cheek? Because Hakari has it on the right one, right? Her destined partners, and then she instantly, in just a fraction Bold. of a second, soon as she fills her heart. It had been 16 years since she's felt the sparks of love fly. So again, like it makes a lot of sense as to, as to why she would fall so easily, Skip I guess. A beat with a little bit of love. She instantly just breaks down is like, marry me, basically. <laughs> 29 year old mother bite by the way 29 year old grown ass woman telling a 16 year old kid it's so good like oh God bless my anime. goodness it is absolutely perfect i love how she has the heart pupils by the way look, look at that she literally hmm. has the hearts in her eyes it's just oh oh my hmm. goodness 100 girlfriends it's just so good man it's legitimately just such a fun and good anime to watch like it is just straight up just dumb fun. And I, I gotta say, like, every single week, it impresses me more and more. And I want to get this 100 with all of you guys. No pun intended. I know <laughs> get it? 100, get it. <laughs> the series called 100 Girlfriends. You know, I have read the manga up to this point. Like, this is basically as far as I got in the okay. manga, FYI. So, like, anything after this content, I'm pretty much blind. I don't really know what's going to happen really after this point. So, yeah, for now on, I'm basically going to be an anime only alongside of all of you guys that are currently watching Anime this. only so plebs. That is fun to look forward to. But I do want to admit, though, that it's just, like, every time I watch an episode, even though I kind of know what's going to happen, it has just blown me away with the added content, the extra scenes they do it's legitimately just perfection like it's just this is a labor of love like this whole project here it's just it's very clear the staff like they really love their job they and like it's kind of hard to like if ha if you have friends that don't watch anime could you recommend this anime and not have them give you shitty looks because like it's pretty hard to sell this type of anime to like normies right like normies aren't just gonna watch 100 girls like when, when they see harem or shit like this they immediately think of stereotypes of you know bad etchy harm animes fan service that doesn't need to exist what are you fucking watching this for but you we know that the show is beyond that yeah yes the fan service does exist but i think there is some good story being told they really love being an animator and they really love working on this show like there is mole mole right here so maybe hakari maybe i don't know if hakari also has a mole here but i i, I just want the confirmation if the mother also has a mole on her upper ass cheeks clear passion behind this work there might be maybe some issues behind the scenes but i do think that just judging by how this series looks and just how it's been presented with all the little added scenes and stuff that was not necessary like there are so many scenes like if you want to dive into the nitty-gritty of just so many of these scenes there's things that are just added that are not in the manga the Karane fan service scenes. But it's added just to add more, you know, comedy and hilarity to just what these series is trying to offer. And I just, I like that. I really like how this show's comedy is done, especially in the anime. And a lot of people, you know, were wondering how the comedy of 100 Girlfriends would be adapted into an anime. Because, like, there is some jokes within 100 Girlfriends that is wordplay to some of the Japanese jokes that stuff. might not translate well into yeah. an animated format. But for the most part, anything that might have had hurdles has been overcome or changed, twisted, or added to to make it really work within an anime setting. And just every single week, I am left watching an episode feeling just satisfied, happy, and with a smile on my face. It's, it's such a good show. And I think everybody that's made it this far, like, you know, 10 episodes deep, probably can't agree with that. And this, I think we're going too coarse with this anime. Like, we're going to get 24 episodes of Godlike series, right? Probably. And, you know, I, I'm just going to say, like, you know what I think really why this show is just so perfect? Why so many Because it's a delusion on a main character having a hundred girlfriends. People are starting to really fall in love with it. It's that every female character really does have a time to shine. It's like... That's it. And it's very wholesome how every girl is actually supporting each other and it's not some crazy like war, you know, it's not like some kind of like concubine war like we're seeing in Apothecary Diaries. No, it's like all the girls truly love each other and want to support like, each other. It's not a one character show like, you know, Rentaro is the main male character and all the other female characters pretty much are in the picture. They all have a spotlight, all a role to play. They but this only works because we only have technically six girlfriends now. What happens when we get 20? 30, 40. How is the show going to scale up? How do we include every girl in every scene? That's impossible. We can't. So I'm sure there's going to be some kind of like, I don't know. An easy way to do this is Rentaro switches schools. 
which is kind of sad for the other girls. But let's say, I don't know, he goes on an international exchange program and he visits America. And now now we don't have to worry about Hakari and the rest of the girls in Japan. Now we can focus on like a different international girlfriend. I don't know. I'm just trying to think of ways that we can scale this show up while trying to include everybody. They all are winning and feeling happy and fulfilled. They have basically their dream boyfriend or husband in the future. And as much as the situation is ridiculous and this is clearly not possible what's going on here. I mean, hell, we got a character that literally is able to turn from like a, a chibi looking character to a full grown adult by now now the the teacher sorry the the what's her name the mother is 29 years old kusuri has drugs that could do anything can we make the mother turn into a high school student can we shrink that age gap so now it's not all of a sudden, you know, looked down upon because you have a grown ass woman trying to date a fucking 16 year old boy. Now, if she was 18, things are a little bit more different, right? Now, things are a little bit more feasible. By just drinking some medicine she made. So it's like when you think about all of this and all that, it's like, yeah, the series is not trying to take itself too seriously and knows what it is, but it's parroting the entire harem rom com genre, and it is great. I wouldn't even call the series trash because I know some people might be quick to label this as like, trashy anime i think most people jump to the gun on what a trashy anime is because of the premise of what this show is a hundred girlfriends so immediately trash you're thinking it's about a story with the guy with the hundred girlfriends no matter what it's gonna be trashy i think it's just a very simple way to label things which is wrong if you actually watch the show is it trashy there's trash how do you define trashy that's that's another important thing. I think it's semantics at the end of the day. But if you if you, are there trashy moments, if you define trashy as in fan service moments, yes, there's a lot of those fan service moments. But that's not the focus of the show. I think there's a lot more to it. I think there definitely is. But I wouldn't even call 100 Girlfriends manga or anime trashy. It's just, it knows what it is. It's diving headfirst into it like balls deep. It doesn't even give a crap. It doesn't care what people say. And I respect that because there's so... Could you argue that it's kind of like Eminence in Shadow where it's also people call it trashy, but it's like, yes, that's the whole point of the cringe. You're, you're, you're intentionally going with it. They're very self-aware of what it's trying to do. So suddenly it doesn't become trashy. Manga out there in anime that try to do this and it's just it fails because it's just it's always the main female character that always wins always has the most spot like there might be some drama here and there but it's always the main female character and that childhood friend always loses that's just that's who we have not had a childhood friend yet that's been showing up into this anime yet except for friend a who was the femboy in episode one so just saying hold guys hold wins and it's just very boring it's very predictable but uh even if you might be able to predict some tropes within this story i don't think you would still be able to fully guess what the series has to offer because the way it uses those tropes it's just like holy crap because like Let's be honest, you probably could have saw that everything was going to work out in the end with the mother and all that. Yeah. And Kakari, but I mean, I think everybody knew that Rentata was going to riz up the mother. One way or the other, that's the only resolution. But how is it going to get there, right? How is it actually going to execute that? And the backstory, I think, definitely added a lot more um, I don't know, sensitive details that made the story less trashy, if you would say. You know, just seeing, you know, this scene with Rentaro kind of having that connection, that bond with Hakari's mother just like falling in love it's just like holy crap it, it, it. I, d I doubt many people saw it because it's it's just it's a huge left turn because it's now j not just you know Hikari you know going after we got Hitar we got the mom and the daughter thirsting over the same boy yes thirsting after him it's also gonna be the mother too they are pretty much identical it's just yep. she's an older woman and just like oh my goodness the series and not only are they identical in that sense, they're both virgins because it's specifically stated that at the age of 13, she was artificially inseminated in order to have a keepsake of her loved one who was terminally ill. So artificial ins insemination, that is the biggest key word here. That implies that she's straight up a virgin. The possibilities that's been now thrown up with the mother being introduced, along with Kusuri having drugs that could make her younger. I'm just saying, the mom is actually in. It's really going there. It's legitimately going now where yeah. this older woman is going after her. 29 year old mother. 29 year old mother and a 16 year old kid. This is like every fucking high school boy's fantasy. <laughs> it's funny, man. It's just, it's so funny like the series doesn't try to take itself too seriously and knows what it is and that's what just makes it so perfect people are so quick to call this trash i've seen so many people say that mm. but it legitimately is not trash it is just a really wholesome fun series there is no losers 
there are some trashy moments. If you say trashy moments are fan service moments, but yeah, I think there is a wholesome story. All the girls are best girls that win. I love it. Um, yeah. Before I wrap up this video, though, I want to ask, what was your favorite scene? Like, out of all these scenes, if we're not counting this final scene with, you know, Akari's mother, you know, what was your favorite scene from this episode? Because Nano saying, kick the fucking cat or gouge the eyes of the dog. That shit came out of fucking left field. Okay, the Karane scene, yes, everybody's going to say de facto. I love the Karane scene. The Karane nutting herself while she's fucking doing that thing. Yeah, there's some fan service involved. But something about Nano straight up saying, let's kick the cat. Let's just fucking gouge the eyes of that dog. It just came out of fucking left field. She's, oh my, I kind of want to actually see it. Legitimately, it's kind of fucked. There was a lot of good scenes. Like the infrared scene is, oh my goodness. This scene. Yeah, that was funny. There's like a, it's like, okay, there's infrared, but it's like how many infrared? Oh, there's so much that we can't even pass it. I thought they were going to do some sort of like cotton is flat joke and she's just going to be able to bypass everything because she's so flat. But no, it wasn't that. Good. But like, what, what was your favorite scene from this episode? What was your favorite character in terms of like who got the spotlight throughout this episode? I'm just legitimately curious. Even Nana doing that rock thing with their fingernail, dude, that was pretty intelligent. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm very happy with this series. I'm so happy that the animators legitimately have put so much time and dedication into this and clearly love this project because, you know, it's not every day we get stuff like this. It's not every day we get an anime that really is given love like this. This is a, a labor of love, passion project for this is the true. studio. And I can't wait to see what they do next for, you know, the next episode. But I guess I'll leave it at that, though. Thank you so much for watching. Y'all know what to do. Give Chibi a like. Subscribe to his channel if you haven't yet. But yeah, we're getting the mother included. The possibilities are endless. And people are saying, and I, I made the comment. This might be spoilers, but I have two more characters I have, I, have, I have in mind, right? First one is childhood friend A, the fanboy. I think the fanboy is going to return in the future. Maybe as a crossdresser. I'm not really sure. But I think we're going to have a token trap in the heart. Another one grandma girlfriend now is this gonna be the vice principal maybe maybe not but i'm just saying i, I i'm just saying the possibilities are limitless with this show